according to Common Core, by the end of second grade, children should know the single addition facts. So they should be able to add a single digit plus a single digit. They should also know the associated single digit subtraction facts, like 2 minus 1 equal to 1, 18 minus 9 equal to 9, etc. And the Common Core supports a learning path in which children actually develop fluency with these addition and subtraction facts by reasoning in progressively more sophisticated ways. The learning path is not just rote memorization, but instead relies on reasoning with the commutative and associative properties of addition, even if the children may not be aware that they're using those properties. So let's look at how those properties come into play here. Let's look at the commutative property. The commutative property allows children to replace addition problems that look like a smaller number plus a larger number with the equivalent problem of the larger number plus the smaller number. So instead of 2 plus 7 equals what, they have 7 plus 2 is equal to what. And even if they don't know the term commutative property, we can point out to children how the order of what number comes first and what number comes second is not important in addition. And even if the child doesn't have a quick recall of either 2 plus 7 or 7 plus 2, we could count on from 7 very easily. We would have 7, 8, and then 9. This is where we're going to count up 1 and 2. And so this one would be much easier for them to solve using those facts than 2 plus 7. And the commutative property of addition lightens the load of learning all the single digit addition facts. It means we only need to know the doubles, like 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 3 plus 3, etc., and the facts of the form larger number plus smaller number. Children often use the associative property whether or not they know this term when they used more advanced derived fact methods for solving addition problems. One of the most common ones is the make a 10 method. So as an example, 8 plus 7, a child may break 7 into 2 plus 5 and they know that 8 plus 2 is 10, and then they have 5 more, so it must be 15. And this uses my associative property. I had 8 plus 2 plus 5. Since 2 plus 5 is 7, I then regrouped to add the 2 to the 8. That gave me 10, and then we could do the 10 plus 5. And the make a 10 method draws children's attention to 10 and helps reinforce the understanding of the teen numbers, 11 to 19, as a 10 plus some ones. Equivalently, we can do a subtract from 10 method. So let's consider something like 13 minus 8. The child may think of 13 as 10 plus 3. and may regroup this to do 10 minus 8 and then plus 3. So in this case, I use both the associative property and the commutative property. I ignored the parentheses, switched the 3 and negative 8, and then I brought the parentheses back. We then have 2 plus 3, which is 5. And the understanding of teen numbers as 10 and some ones is critically important to making sense of multi-digit addition and subtraction. When we think of a problem like 28 plus 47, the first step would be to add 8 plus 7, get 15, write down the 5 and carry the 1. But to understand this regrouping method, the child has to know that 8 plus 7 is 15, but also that 15 is 110 and 5 ones. And these methods help children connect and relate addition facts, as well as derive facts they don't know yet, from ones they have already learned.